What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com, back with another SketchUp layout tutorial for you. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use fog to create depth and emphasis in your layout models. Before I get started, uh, this video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. So the SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I designed to basically give you the value of having a two-day um, in-person training, but it's something that you can have indefinite access to. So it's something where I wanted to cover um, a little bit of everything, starting from the basics of SketchUp all the way into different topics like uh, SketchUp for layout, SketchUp uh, introduction to photorealistic rendering, um, advanced modeling concepts, that sort of thing. So that course is 40% off through February 28th for anyone who pre-orders. So make sure to check that out at thesketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this video is based on some methods that are discussed by Nick Sonder in the book SketchUp to Layout for Architecture. So that book contains a lot of information about this. It's really good for creating like stylized type models and also really making your line weight visible while making your plans kind of artistic. So um, there, there's a lot of other methods for that as well, but I wanted to kind of go over using fog within your layout images. And so if you're interested in more information about that, you can check that out and also get more layout resources by visiting the sketchup essentials.com slash layout so what we have here is we have a house model and I got this one out of the placemaker building bundle you can really use whatever uh, whatever model that you want to and so the reason I picked this model is because it has a, a section back here that we want to give some depth to so what we want to do is we want to create an elevation view but we want to give it a little bit of depth to give the idea that this is kind of back behind everything else and so the first thing we're gonna do and uh, we do this basically every time we're ever gonna create an elevation view is we're gonna turn our camera mode to parallel projection and so when we turn our camera mode to parallel projection you can see how the vanishing points or the uh, perspective lines no longer go to vanishing points they're kinda parallel along this way and the benefit of that is when we get into our front elevation view right here you can see how when perspective view is on then you, you get some kind of weird perspective lines and some extra stuff in here it's not really a straight up and down view but if we turn parallel projection on then this will give us our straight up and down view and so what we've got here is we've got kind of the front of our building um, the part that kind of sticks out here and then we've got this stuff that's kind of further back and so what I want to do is I want to use fog in order to give this some depth and so in order to do that, what we're going to do is find the view of the building that you want, whatever view you want to export to layout, and then once you've found that, you can check the box for display fog. And so when you check the box for display fog, what that's going to do is that's going to turn the fog on in your model. And so you can see I can use these two sliders to kind of dictate where the fog is. So in this case, you have the front and the back of the fog. So basically... What this means is the further to the left you drag this first slider, the closer the fog start point is going to be to your camera. So in this case, since I've dragged it all the way to 0%, we've got fog everywhere. And if I click this all the way to the left, then you can see how it basically gives me a message saying, hey, your fog is going to hide your entire model. Well, what we want to do in this case is we want to set up our fog so that it shows up just a little bit on our back image right here and so to do that we're just gonna play around with these sliders a little bit and so you can see what I can do is I I can drag this until the fog starts on the back part of this model and then I can drag this back one to adjust the strength of the way that that fog looks and so all I want to do in this case is I want to fade this out just a little bit so you can tell by looking at this that this is in the foreground this is in the background and then once you've done all of that, what you can do is you can export this to layout. So in this case, I actually already have this set up as an elevation. So you can see how when I click on the west elevation, the fog is turned on. And one thing to note about fog is when you're working with fog and your model's running really slow, you need to turn that fog off. The fog will definitely reduce your performance in your model. So it's something that you kind of want to set up maybe save in a view and you can save that to your scenes by the way um, just make sure the box for style and fog is checked in your scenes in your scene area of your tray so you want to save that but then when you go back to your working view you want to turn that off so it doesn't slow your model down what we're going to do now is we're just going to go up to file we're going to click send to layout 
it's going to ask if we want to save our model before sending it to layout. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Uh, your models have to be saved before they can go to layout. And then this is going to pop up layout. And you could open this from directly within layout too if you wanted to. But it's going to ask us to select a template file. So in this case, I'm just going to scroll down and I'm just going to select the tabloid landscape file and click OK. So if you have your own templates, you may want to use those. But you can see what this does is this brings this elevation image into your into your layout file with the fog active. And so the only thing you have to do at this point is just pick your scale and that's kind of a trial and error thing. So you can see how if I set it to an eighth, it gets smaller. If I set it to 3 16 it fits about right. So that's probably gonna be the scale that you're gonna use in this file. And so that's probably the easiest way to use Fog. I wanna talk about a couple other ways that you can use it as well. And so this is a model that I've downloaded from the 3D Warehouse. And what we're gonna do with this model is we're gonna create a plan view and we're gonna use the Fog on the plan view to really emphasize the way that our floor plan looks. So we're gonna use it to emphasize kind of our line weights and our textures. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click the top view button. And so that's going to take us to a top view of our of our model. And so you can see this gives me kind of a straight up and down view. Make sure you set it to par or, uh, parallel projection. But then what we're going to do is we're going to set up two different views. So in the last example, we only had one view. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to set up basically... Basically, we're going to set up a pair of views. So the first view we're going to set up is going to be a top-down view without the building. So this is an example of why grouping and setting up layers in your model is so important. Because basically what we're going to do is we're going to turn off everything except our terrain when we set up our first camera view. So I'm going to set this up as basically a plan view without the building to start off. And then once I've done that, once I've set that up kind of the way that I want it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a scene. And we're going to go into the scene manager and we're going to name this. And naming your scenes gets important because you're going to access them within layout. But in this case, I'm just going to move this down. And by the way, this is in your default tray. If you can't see your default tray, go up to window, default tray, show tray and make sure that the box for scenes is checked. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this first scene and we're going to name it something like terrain view. And so we're going to make sure all these boxes are checked for camera location, style and fog, all those different things. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to turn fog on. And we're going to check the box for display fog. And once again, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this so that you get kind of a foggy color over your plan. So we want it to be enough that it's a noticeable effect, but not so much that you can't see the details of what's going on. So in this case, this I think gave me a pretty good fog view. So once I've got that all set up, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna update this. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a second view with our building in it. And I'm probably going to do a section cut on the building just so we can kind of see what the walls look like. But so what we're going to do is we're going to turn all of these layers back on and we're going to turn our terrain off. So I've turned everything back on that's in the building and I turned everything off that was terrain. And so what we want to do in this case is we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn our fog off for this scene. So we want to turn fog off. And then to save our camera view, we're gonna go ahead and click add and we're gonna add a new scene. And for this new scene, we're just gonna call it building. So that'll give me a scene with my terrain view and it'll give me a scene with my building in it. So that gives us two different options. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add a section cut onto my building. So I'm just gonna go over to the section cut or the section plane tool that you can find in the large tool set and I'm going to add a section plane. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that section plane up and down until I get a view that shows me a cut through of my entire building. So in this case, this seems like about the right height. And You'll notice when I clicked on this uh, this building option, it turned my section plane off. That's because we didn't we didn't have this active when we first 
created this view. So go back to your building view, right click on this section plane and check the box for active cut. And so when you check the box for active cut, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create your section plane view um, of your building. And we're gonna go ahead and go to view and we're gonna turn off section planes. And so probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in on this building a little bit and I'm just gonna update my camera view to kind of show that. And then a little trick that you can use is I'm gonna click on this terrain view and you can see how that had a different camera view. We want these to have the same camera view. Well, since we switched directly from the building tab to the terrain tab, we can just go up to camera. We can just go up to camera and we can click previous and that'll take us back to the previous camera view that we had active. And so you'll notice when you do this, your fog gets kind of messed up. So you're gonna have to come back in here and readjust this so that your fog shows back up. And then we're just gonna update this view. So now we have two views that we can switch between. We have our building view with the section cut and then we have our terrain view. And so you can see that that takes a second for it to cut through in here. And the reason for that is because it's animating the section cut. You don't really need to worry about that for right now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this building and one of the things to note is in SketchUp 2018, SketchUp added the ability to set the line weight of a section cut in SketchUp. So in this case, this is giving me really thick lines wherever that section cut was. So you can see what this is doing right now is it has my section lines and also my section fill set to black. So with this new SketchUp feature, basically you can set the fill of your walls with this little box over here in your styles. So in this case, I'm gonna turn these line weights down a little bit for the section cuts. Um, I'm probably gonna set them to two. And you can see how I can set that section line width to set kind of a custom line weight wherever my section cut is cutting through my walls. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click this button for update style with changes. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna save the changes inside the architectural design style style. So the last thing I'm gonna do before I send this to layout is I'm gonna set my background settings. I'm gonna turn off my sky and I'm gonna turn my background to white. And the reason for that is when I turn my background to white, then I can turn I can make it transparent over in layout. So go ahead and refresh that style with a background of white. Update your view. And then save your model. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to layout and we're gonna have our file open and we're just gonna do a file, insert, and we're gonna select our model. So in this case, my model name is labeled House on Hill. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring this viewport into my model. And so when I bring this in, the first thing I wanna do is for every layer that I bring in or every viewport that I bring in, I wanna put it on its own layer. So in this case, I'm gonna put this layer on the house layer. That way, that way I can turn it on and off. So I created a layer labeled it house and then I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna click move to layer house. And so then you should be able to turn this on and off by clicking on the eye. And so in this case, what we wanna do, cause we've brought our viewport in, we wanna set it to a certain, um, a certain scene. So in this case, we're gonna set this to our building scene. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna update my model reference cause it doesn't seem to be, there we go. And so now I have this layer in here. And the one thing I wanna make sure that I do is I wanna make sure in my styles, I wanna make sure that the background from the model is turned off because I'm gonna layer this on top of my other viewport. And so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna click on this. And I'm gonna do an edit, copy, edit, paste. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring in a second layer or a second viewport like this one. But for this new viewport, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the plus button and we're gonna call this one landscape. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna click this is I wanna move this new layer to the landscape layer. And then I'm gonna turn my house layer off. So now what I have is I have a layer with my house associated with the building view. And then I have another layer that's on the landscape layer. And we wanna set that scene for that viewport to our terrain view. And so you can see how what I did is I right clicked and I just went down and I selected scenes and I checked the box for terrain view. And so now what I have is I have a layer for my landscape 
and I have a layer for my house that I can turn on and off and we can zoom in and out on these and what what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and I'm gonna select both of these and set them to a certain scale so in this case you can kinda of look and see the current scale that it brings them in at is this 371 so most likely this one inch equals 30 feet is gonna make the most sense so I'm just gonna select both of those click the drop down and do the one inch equals 30 feet so now if I zoom in on this what I have is I have kind of a grayed out landscape area and I have a building in here that's um, a lot more emphasized and so the last thing I want to do and I'm gonna go ahead and unselect these or deselect these I'm gonna turn off my landscape layer for a second and on my house I'm gonna change my render method to hybrid and so the reason I'm gonna put that to hybrid is because I want to show the complex styles in here but I also want better line weights than what I'm seeing right here and you have to be a little bit careful when you do this Sometimes it may be better to do this a different way, but on a model like this, I think it's going to be okay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to check, we're going to click the little drop down, or we're going to go down and we're going to select the option for hybrid rendering. And you're going to get this notification that this is going to take longer to render. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And watch the lines when it does this. So these lines are going to go from really choppy to really smooth. And you've also got your textures in here in this building. So then all we have to do is just turn our landscape back on. And now you've got this plan that shows your emphasized building as well as your kind of grayed out but still their landscape. So this is a great way to show emphasis in your drawings. That's where I'm going to end this video. Um, I had a third example. This video started getting a little bit long. So if you guys are interested, I can get into another example with more of a city. Um, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're interested in that. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.